Hi, my name is Sarah Levine. This is for VET 221, the video portfolio, surgical, assisting, and anesthesia. Um, today we are going to do be doing a procedure on a nine-year-old spayed Yorkshire Terrier. We're going to be doing a dental assessment and treatment. Um, so essentially right now I'm just prepping uh, the dental suite for it. So first off I will turn on oxygen, make sure we have enough oxygen, and also turn on our scavenging system. So follow me this way. This is our main source of oxygen here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Hey, 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 hey. As you can see, we do have enough in there, which is awesome. I'm going to go ahead and also turn on the scavenging system over here. Right here. And the light is on, so that means that it's on. And now I'm going to go ahead and check this my flow good. meter in here okay. and make sure that the oxygen is working. This is Shiloh. This is our anesthesia machine. You can go ahead and turn it. And as you can see, that's moving as it should appropriately, so we're good with our oxygen. So now I need to set up for our tubes and our rebreathing bay. Our patient today is 4.1 kgs, so we're going to go with a non-rebreather. Um, and that essentially is going to allow her a little bit easier when she's under anesthesia to make sure that um, she's not having to put so much effort in when she's breathing and making sure she's getting the anesthesia gases correctly. So we'll head over here to get our supplies. She'll also be getting a half liter bag. Oh my goodness, you're not a chihuahua. Um, she's really sweet girl. Um, she really likes the food. Um, she's really sweet. She's really sweet. Um, she's really sweet. Perfect. Are you guys good? Perfect. Um, they wanted to wait in the lobby. It's getting really hot. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And after I do this, are they ready to? So we'll get this set up. They're ready to go unless somebody can go over general spay and CP with them. Okay. Okay. If you could do that. All right. So, going over the anesthesia machine itself. Um, this cord is going to be coming from our main oxygen source, so that's the source that I turned on earlier. Um, it's going to come down here and connect to the back of the machine here. And then this is going to allow it to come through and go through our uh, flow meter here, so I can adjust it as needed. Um, after that, it's going to come down here and follow this tube and go through our vaporizer. Um, so we use isofluorine for our gas anesthetic. You can look down here and note that <clears throat> it's pretty full, but it's a little bit right about at half, so I'll fill that up a little bit. That is over half, so we'll go ahead and close that. So after oxygen has been able to combine with our vaporizer here, it's going to come out on the side right here. So we're looking at it right over here. It's going to come up this tube here. And then as you can see, it does a Y break. That Y break is essentially going to allow us to toggle it between the non-rebreather, which is going to be on this side, and the rebreather, which is going to be on this side. Since we're using the non-rebreather, I'm going to go ahead and switch that to non-rebreather. I'm going to then connect my stuff. This is going to go on here. And I do need to get one little piece to add to my scavenger. So give me just I have my little converter piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the scavenging system connection there and get it connected to my non-rebreather here. So this tube is going to allow us to have the oxygen with the anesthetic go into the patient here, which will be connected to the endotracheal tube. When they breathe out, our bag will go here. So it'll, we'll make sure it's open. We'll go ahead and allow that to come through. They'll be able to breathe once they have um, exhaled and the, ga or, and the oxygen is done. It's going to go through here and it'll get pulled up by the scavenging system, which will go up through the ceiling and through our scavenging. Um, I'm going to show you also for the rebreather. So if we had someone that was bigger, um, we go ahead and change this to the rebreather. Detach this. We can take this part off. And we go ahead and reattach this. 
we've got our Y tubes here. So I go ahead and connect this. So since it's been switched over, that means now we'll do our other section of the Y, which will be here, which will allow it to go through, go up through this tube, and come through here, which will allow it to go to the patient through here. They'll go ahead and inhale, and when they exhale, it'll go out this way. It'll go through here, and then we've got our reservoir bag here. So it'll go through here, and then it'll get picked up by the scavenger going through the pop-up valve, out the back, down this long tube, and then out through our scavenging system. Um, and we're going to go ahead and do a low-pressure test right now just to make check for any leaks. So I'm going to do that by closing the pop-off valve, putting my thumb here so it's blocking the oxygen. Make sure it's on rebreather since that's the side we're using. Go ahead and blow up the bag so it's over 20 and watch and make sure we're not going down, which we are not. And then to check and make sure the pop-off valve is working correctly, I'm going to go ahead and open that. And it's gone down to zero, so that's working correctly. And we're all set. Okay, so a couple other things that we want to check quick before we um, put our patient under anesthesia. We're going to check our sodas or our granules. Um, these are what takes out the expired carbon dioxide. Um, so we're going to go ahead and check that. As you can see, they're white. Um, when they have been expired or they have essentially absorbed too much, um, they'll turn a purple color, so we just want to ensure that they're not that color. Okay, so unfortunately, this is why we check. Um, these are purple, so that means that they are past their expiration. So we're going to want to go ahead and change these out, actually. Um, so give me a quick moment, and we'll get those changed out. Okay, so as you can see, I've changed them out, so now we're all woohoo, nice and white. So we'll go ahead and change the date on the outside of this too. We're gonna make sure we put that back in and that it's fully closed. Um, I did want to go over as well, um, for up here these are one-way valves, so when I was showing earlier the flow of oxygen as well as gas, um, the inhalation, so this is going to only allow the gas to go this way, versus this one-way valve which is going to be the exhale which is only going to allow gas to go this way, which essentially is going to make sure that it's going in the right direction and that our patient isn't constantly rebreathing in the same stuff, okay? Um, for our non-rebreather, I did want to show... Let's switch this back over so we're ready for our patient today. Um, you can also check this system as well just to make sure that this pop-off valve is working. So I'm going to do the same thing where I stick my thumb in here. I'm going to close this. I'm going to go ahead and blow this up and make sure that this is staying, which it is. Great. And then we're going to go ahead and open that, which the pop-up valve on here is working as well. Um, as you can see, this one does not have the one-way valves that it does up here. Um, so to overcompensate for that, it's going to be a little bit higher of an oxygen flow rate. Um, so to figure out our oxygen flow rate, we're going to take our KIGS, which is 4.1. And for a non-rebreather, we're going to multiply that by 0.25. So it's going to be about one liter per minute. So on here, that's going to be making sure that our oxygen is right about there. Okay? Now, if we were to use a non-rebreather, what? Or if we were to use a rebreather, the equation would be uh, the KIGS times 0.025 to 0.05. Okay? So, for example, say we had a... 15 kg dog, so I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.025, so we're going to be at about a half liter, we'll round up, and then 15 times 0 0.05, it's going to be 0 0.75, so 0.5 or um, a half liter per minute is going to be what we will be doing in that. Okay, so Tasha Martin is our dental assessment and treatment patient today. 
Um, I'll go ahead and get her anesthesia record and her dental chart here. Um, I'm taking a look in the computer just at her blood work, which was performed within the last 60 days. That's our clinic protocol. Um, and looking through it, one of the doctors has already gone over the results with the owner, but it looks like our globulin was a little bit high. ALT, BUN, creatinine, that's all normal. Cholesterol was a little bit high, which can relate to the globulin. And down here for our CBC section of it, it looks like our only abnormality was a little bit high platelet count, which can be due to stress. Everything else looks great. Our T4 is perfect. Um, and just reading through the doctor's notes here, matches up with what we said. Um, she already discussed the results and she is okay to go ahead with the procedure. Um, since she does have more severe periodontal disease happening and she is 11 years old and a smaller breed, um, she doesn't have any sort of heart murmur or she's not on any medications besides incontinence, so she's not prone right now. Um, we'll put her at an ASA of 2 um, just because that potential periodontal disease could lead as an opening into the rest of her body, so as some sort of bacterial infection, um, and the blood work just could not be showing that yet because it's really early, um, so it's something to watch for. Um, we will make sure that we get some antibiotics on board for her. Um, and we're going to go ahead and go through and talk to the doctor, make sure we're on the same game, pa game page as far as what we're going to do for today. I'm going to also go ahead and make sure that a exam has been done. Um, so if I go into her file for today and go into examination, you can see here that um, it has been filled out. Um, it looks like there's two bumps that are noted, one on the right side of her head, one on the left, and then she's got a stage 3 tartar and dental calculus, but her gums are pink and moist, which is awesome. Lymph nodes are all normal, um, no murmur detected on her heart, and the lungs are sculpted clear, so it looks like here from the exam that she's good to go. So we'll go ahead and go over everything with Dr. Bowling. Okay, so this is Dr. Bowling. He is the one doing the procedure today, so I'm going to go ahead and check base with him and make sure that we're all ready to go. Um, so Dr. Bowling, today we're doing a dental assessment and treatment on Tasha Martin. We've already done the exam. Blood work looked great. Um, we have her at ASA of 2 just because she is a little bit older of a gal, and then also she's got stage 3 dental tartar happening. Um, for our preoperative medication, we're going to go with hydromorphone. That'll be IM. Our dose will be 0.1 mg per kg. Um, and then for our induction, we'll be using midazolam and propofol. Midazolam will be at 0.2 mg per kg, propofol will be at 4 mg per kg. Um, and then her oxygen flow rate will be right around 1, just because we will be using a not rebreather since so she's 4.1 kg. Yeah. Does everything check out for you? Sounds perfect. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get all of our drugs drawn up and calculated, and then we'll let you know we're right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now and calculate our drugs, um, our medications, I should say, for our procedure today. Um, so, luckily on our anesthesia record, it's nice we have a spot kind of for everything. Um, after I've done everything, I'll have my preceptor care line come in and check it as well. So, 9.1 pounds, 4.1 kgs. I got that by going 9.1 divided by 2.2 and got 4.13. So, we do 4.1. I'm going to go ahead then and do 4.1 times 0 0.1, which is going to be for our hydro. That's mg per kg. And then I'm going to divide by 2, as that's the concentration, 2 mg per mil. We got 0 0.2, so we'll write that down here. For our midazolam and our propofol, I'll do that next. So again, I'll take 4.1 kilograms times 0.2 divided by 5, as that's our concentration. And I'll get 0 0.16. And then last but not least for our propofol, um, the dose that the doctor wants is the 4 mg per kg, and then I'll divide by 10, which is the concentration, and get 1.6 mils. So I'll go ahead and grab Caroline and have her double check those for me. Okay, just confirming the medication doses for safety for our patient. Um, hydromorphone at um, 0.1 milligrams per kilogram. So first we're going to figure out that kilograms are correct. We have 9.1 pounds for our patient divided by 2.2 equals 4.1 kilograms. So then for hydromorphone, 4.1 kilograms times 
0.1 milligrams per kilogram equals 0.41 and divided by the concentration which is 2 equals 0 0.2 mils. We initial showing that we have officially checked and moving on to midazolam and propofol. Midazolam is 0.2 milligrams per kilogram so 4.1 kilograms times 0.2 equals 0.82 um, milligrams total divided by our concentration which is 5 milligrams per mil equals 0.16 mLs of midazolam and then propofol we are going to do kilograms 4.1 times 4 milligrams per kilogram equals 16.4 milligrams total divided by our concentration of 10 milligrams per mil equals 1.64 mLs. And we'll drop the 0.4 because it's hard to measure. So. Okay, so we've pulled up our 0.2 hydromorphone. Doo -doo. And we're going to administer this IM. So it's going to be going in the left apaxial. Um, and how I like to do it is use the L, essentially, where I'm going to figure out where that last rib is, figure out where the backbone is, and then the apaxial is going to be right in that L. So can you see that? Boop! All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the cap. And then we're going to go ahead and poke, pull back, and then go ahead and administer. And she's such a good girl! So we're making sure that this is done 15 to 20 minutes prior to our procedure, and then we'll go ahead and monitor her now to make sure that she's not having any strange reaction to it. Um, also, sometimes they can vomit, so we want to make sure that we pull out that blanket and just watch her for that and clean it up right away. Um, otherwise, um, after 15 to 20 minutes, allowing her to sit there and kind of fake, so to say, we'll go ahead and get our infection going. Good job, Tasha! Okay, so we're going to go ahead and prep everything now um, so we can go ahead and get an IV catheter in our patient. So what I'm going to do also is grab two um, different tracheal tubes so that way if the dog seems smaller or larger, depending on that, we can make it happen. We're also going to allow a tie so that way it can be secured appropriately. So over here we've got our stuff, and this is for our 4.1 kilogram Yorkie, so I'm going to go with a five and a half and a six um, and I'm doing that just depending on the nose size of the dog. So this is kind of your best guess. I'm also going to grab a tie which is going to be long enough to make sure that we're able to tie it around the patient's head. So we're going to have this here. I'm going to go ahead and check both of these cuffs and make sure they're working. Um, I'm also going to keep the syringe over here so I can go ahead once we're intubated to blow up the cuff if needed. That's going to allow to make sure that that airway is fully closed so we're only, um, we don't have any leaks so none of the anesthetic gas is coming out. Um, also, if they were to vomit or something under anesthesia, this is going to help protect make sure we're not aspirating because it's blocking it. Um, so this cuff is working. So we can go ahead and put that on the side. Great, that one's working as well. So we'll keep that on the side along with our ties. I'm also going to keep this over here with it. And then we've also got our eye lubrication, which we'll have ready as well. Um, next, we'll prep the area for our IV catheter. Get out two syringes of our heparinized saline, which we'll use as flush. Um, the concentration is going to be one mil per 100 mils, 10 units per mil, aka 30 units per three mils. That's what it'll be. Okay, so um, the IV catheter choices I've made are a 22 gauge and a 20 gauge. I'm going to go ahead and open up the 22 gauge just to prep that. that. 
and then replace that so that's ready to go. We'll also keep extra flush over here. I'm going to get my tape ready as well. Um, and I like to put little tabs on it, it just makes it easier to take it off. We'll do three or three different scrubs: chlorhexidine and then alcohol, chlorhexidine, alcohol, chlorhexidine, and alcohol. Um, after we've shaved, it will be a cephalic IV catheter. Um, that's all good. As far as our heating, we're going to we've got a warm water blanket under here, which we'll have turned on. Um, the towel obviously over that, so the patient isn't touching that with their skin. We've also got a bear hugger, which we can turn on, which will go over top of the patient to keep them nice and warm. We've got our IV fluid set up over here, which I've already changed out. So we've got a new needle, so we can go ahead and insert that once the IV catheter is placed. Um, for our surgical procedures here, we do 10 mils per kg per hour. Um, so she'll be getting 41 mils per hour, so she's 4.1 kgs. And then we've also got our mask here, which we'll go ahead and use for pre-oxygenation. Um, we pre-oxygenate for five to seven minutes beforehand, so we'll have that already. Stethoscope ready, so that way we're able to make sure and check on the patient, make sure induction is going correctly, um, and then make sure that the tube is inserted correctly. And then we've already got our rebreather system set up from earlier. Again, our oxygen flow rate is going to be right about um, one liter per minute. Um, and we figured that out by doing the kegs times 0.25. And I think we're all set to go. Um, I did want to go over as well for our prepping. We do, uh, for every one of our uh, patients, print off an emergency drug sheet. Um, so I went ahead and printed that off. Um, it essentially, you just plug in the weight and then it figures out the kigs or confirms it, which we've already done, and then it gives me some of our emergency drugs such as atropine or um, buprenorphine or dex or, or epinorphine, um, naloxone, all those good things are already pre-kind of concentrated or pre-calculated so we have them using the concentrations that we carry here and the usual doses that we use. Um, and then we do have a crash cart, which is going to be, so this is the dental suite here that we've got it all prepped for. Um, and then our crash cart is located right over here, and this is going to be where I can find all of our emergency drugs if needed in this second drawer here. <laughs> Okay, so we're about to get ready to induct for our dental assessment and treatment. Right now we're just pre-oxygenating our patient, so we're using a mask that works for her, and we're going to pre-oxygenate for five to seven minutes. So hang tight. Okay, so we've pre-oxygenated for five to seven minutes, so we're going to go ahead and induct now. Um, I've got my induction agents here. I've got midazolam, which is 0.16, so I'm just going to verify that. I don't know if you can actually see that, but it is 0.16. Um, and then propofol, I've got 1.6, which is also drawn up. Um, and I'm going to verify that on here, which are both correct. Uh, make sure we've got no air bubbles in there. Propofol, we've got one little air bubble. There we go. Um, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and flush with at least two mils of Okay. Um, the concentration of the saline in here is 30 units per 3 mils or 10 units per 1 mil. Good girl, Tosh. So I'm going to go ahead and flush. That's good. Okay, so cap 
doctor's still pain. I'm going to go ahead now and administer our midazolam, which again has been checked, no air bubbles in. And then we do propofol to effect, so I'll go ahead and start pushing that, and then as soon as she seems good, we'll go ahead and intubate. And while I'm doing this, I'm just making sure I've got my tube set up, I've got everything ready to go, so we're all set once she is ready. A little bit more, and then we should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and flush. I'm just going to have my assistant grab a larger scope. She's got a pretty tiny. Oxygen hooked back up, get her tie tied around here, but then we're going to go ahead and feel and palpate and make sure there's not two different tubes, which there's not, so that's going to ensure that it is in the trachea. And then we're also, I'm just going to give her a couple breaths. Um, actually, I have, I'll tie this in first and then I'll have Caroline give a couple breaths so I can check and listen and make sure that everything sounds, the lungs feel sound good and that we are administering oxygen where it needs to go, which is the lungs. Let's go ahead and tie back here. Um, also while I'm back here, I'm just going to listen to her heartbeat also, make sure everything sounds good. I'm also confirming that her abdomen is not inflating, but rather her lungs. Her heart rate sounds, or her heart sounds great. Awesome. So go ahead and puff up this cuff to ensure that that is tight. We'll do a quick test. Great, I don't hear any leaks, so we're good there. We'll go ahead and turn on our gas anesthetic. We'll turn her on to one and a half right now, but we'll be able to move that depending on how her body reacts to it. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I put down when my drugs were administered, the size 2, which was a 5 that we put into her, um, and then also lubricating her eyes to make sure that's all set. Okay, now that we've got our patient under 
intubated, all that good stuff. I'm going to make sure that the isoflurry is on the lowest possible one, um, but she's still comfortably under anesthesia and on the correct plane of anesthesia. I'm going to go ahead and listen quick to breathing and heart rate just to confirm everything sounds good. Respiratory rate is at 50, so I'm going to go ahead and record that quick. I'm here. Alright, and then we'll get her start to get her hooked up to our monitoring systems. Um, first thing we're going to do is do our ISO shut off. ISO shut off and then put back on while I was putting that on. Um, that's our CO2 and also our breathing monitor. So that's going to allow us to check that out. I'm going to also hook up our ECG. Black is going to go in the left armpit. Red is going to go in the left inguinal area. White will go in the right armpit. And then we'll go ahead and Put some alcohol on there so it starts to read. Pulse ox, I'm going to use the tail. Just needs a membrane to read through. blood pressure cuff which I'm going to put on a rear leg making sure that it's the correct size so it's not too tight and it's not too loose. I'm going to also make sure that my machine is set up to auto so it's going to go every five minutes. And then we've got our IV fluids that we're going to hook up. Um, our rate is going to be 41 mils per hour since so she is 4.1 kgs and our surgical rate is 10 mils per kg per hour. So go ahead and do that. This is a new needle, so we're good there. Start that. We have our esophageal stethoscope, which I will also put down. Make sure to check that periodically. We've already got our heating blanket on underneath and then we've got our bear hugger on over top to help keep this patient warm, which we're already reading at 100.5, which is great. and compare that to the ECG, um, as you can see. We've got some beautiful anesthesia at the moment. She's on a great plane. I am dictating how much using the um, vaporizer to make sure that she's not getting too much, too little, but she's staying under correctly. Um, and listening periodically as well, just to make sure everything sounds good.
heart rate is 146. Blood pressure is 113 over 36 with a map of 62. Throw these on just since I'm getting kind of close to Caroline over here cleaning. Um, there we go. Um, our SPO2 is at 100, which is great. Our respiratory rate is 28. Our entitled CO2 is 31. And we are currently on two for our settings, so we're at the lowest one possible. Um, and now that I've made that recording, everything's good. We'll go ahead and make sure we do that in another five minutes. I'm also making sure that I'm giving her a couple breaths um, through the rebreather. Um, and that's just going to make sure that we're keeping positive. Okay, so we're at another five minute interval. We just got another reading off of our um, monitor as far as the blood pressure. Everything is still looking beautiful. I have not made too many adjustments. I've just turned down the ISO about a quarter just to see how we do on that. It's so far so good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take another reading and again listen and just verify everything's going well. Um, our fluid's still at 41 mils per hour, our heart rate's at 142, and our blood pressure is 117 over 47 with a MAP of 70. Okay. Which is great. Um, our SpO2 is at 100. Awesome. And respiratory rate is 32 with our CO2 I'm also keeping track of the level of anesthesia that she's at, so which, um, what I have the dial on for the isoflurane at the bottom, along with the time up top, just to keep track of that. I'm gonna go ahead and check temperature, which is staying right at one. I'm just going to take a quick look at her as well. about 145 for my heart rate, which matches with the machine, which is awesome. And then again, we're going to just make sure we're doing a couple of breaths for her to keep that positive pressure. Okay, so just checking back in. Um, Tasha's still under for her dental assessment and treatment. We're going to take another reading now. Um, I'm going to start off by checking our fluid, so our total volume infused, which is ooh, ooh, right here. So we'll go ahead and check that. That is 52. Go. So I'll just record that. And then And then we just got another reading, so 106 over 31 map of They dry out so they won't let us read as well. <clears throat> While it's kicking back out, I'm going to go ahead and listen. Alright, 
Okay, pulse sound, uh, heart rate sounds great. Um, I'm going to record temperature. So far, I have not had to get Dr. Boney for anything concerning. Um, her anesthesia has been pretty boring, which is awesome and exactly what I like. Temp is... Five. Again, we're just keeping her underneath the bear hugger, so we're keeping our temperature nice and warm despite our small size. Um, and I think, oh, our SpO2, I gotta record that, is 100. Pulse is 138. Alright, so everything's going well. I'll just continue to keep monitoring and writing everything down. Um, and we flip, so we're on the second side now. Okay, so it's been another five minutes, so just checking in. Um, again, uh, I'm always making sure that I'm giving a couple breaths to make sure we've still got positive pressure happening. Um, again, that's going to be 15 to 20 uh, centimeters H2, H2O. Um, I'm going to check again vital signs. Everything is looking really great so far. Um, heart rate's at 139. Um, our anesthesia, our isoflurane level is still... Right below two, so I'm about one and three quarters. So I'm going to record that as well. Um, rest rate is 21. Entitled CO2 is 33, which is great. Um, blood pressure is 105 over 42 with a map of 63. Uh, I do that. SpO2 is 99, and everything looks good there. I'm going to go ahead and take another listen. Great, and I'm getting about 144 heart rate, which is matching up with our monitoring device. Um, last but not least, I'll just get our volume infused again. That's 57. Perfect. Keep that going. Um, and last but not least, we'll just listen to the esophageal stethoscope, just make sure everything sounds good. And then um, we'll check in later. Everything's looking great. Um, still no need to get Dr. Bullard at the moment. ECG is looking beautiful. Um, our inspired CO2 was a little bit high, but we actually increased the flow rate. Um, that's going to make sure that we're not, we're pushing that CO2 out of the system and not allowing the patient to breathe it back in, which is great. So that's decreased since then. We're at two right now. Um, otherwise, everything looks great, and we will keep keeping an eye on her. Okay, so we are finishing up shortly, so I'm going to start to decrease um, the isoflooring rate. So we are at about one and three quarters, so I'm just going to go down to about one and a quarter. And then I'll slowly transition down to zero when we're ready to turn off, just while we're finishing up. <clears throat> I'm also continuing to take uh, vitals every five minutes, so I'll go ahead and do that right now. Um, Tasha's been doing great under anesthesia. We've had no issues thus far. Um, none that I need to bring up to Dr. Foley. So our fluid volume infused is 80 mils, so I'll write that down. Our temperature is 101.1. .1. Our heart rate is 132. Our SpO2 is at 99. I'm going to move her down to one and a quarter now. All right, uh, blood pressure is 113 over 52 with a map of 72, which is great.
I'm also just going to check the mucous membranes um, since Caroline got up for a second just to make sure everything looks good there. Capillary refill time is less than two seconds, which is great. Gums are, mink, are pink and moist, so we record that. I'm writing down uh, 1.25 for our isofluorine. Respirate is 28, and our end tidal CO2 is 30. So I've got everything written down on here, like so. Uh, we've got our volume infused down. I'm going to listen to her quick, and then like I said, we'll continue to gradually decrease until we are complete. We're just finishing up. Everything sounds good. Okay, so we've just completed, so I'm going to go ahead and turn our patient off anesthesia, the isofluorine. And now that we're off, we're still going to keep her on oxygen, but we will start to begin removing all of the equipment. So we can kind of scoot this down a little bit so you can actually see me. Yeah, that'll work. Doing it. Yeah. Recording a final vitals on her. She will stay on oxygen five minutes post-op per our hospital requirement. Gums are nice and pink. Capillary refill time is less than two seconds. <laughs> Temperature is 100.4, which is great. Yeah. I'm gonna stop IV fluids now that we're done. Total volume infused was 105, so I will record that as well. My anesthesia stop time has also been recorded. Alright. Um, so now we'll go ahead and let her stay on oxygen for the next five minutes. I'll continue to monitor her just listening with my stethoscope to make sure um, heart rate sounds good. She is still hooked up to our breathing monitor, so I can still read that on here. Um, otherwise, uh, when we come back, I'll go ahead and start cleaning and put everything away. Okay, so Miss Tasha is fully recovered. She's doing great in her kennel right now. We've got her all snuggled in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning this area, um, so all the monitoring devices. We can turn off the bear hugger and the warming blanket. Um, we'll go ahead. These are just alcohol wipes that I'm using. Oh, I kind of made a mess in here, didn't I? <laughs> Making sure not to coil anything too tightly um, because that can actually break the wiring. So just a very loose, um, but still uh, putting it back in a way where it'll be easy for the next person to use. Last but 
not least, after we clean this bad boy, we'll go ahead and change the needle on our IV fluids. Machine is turned off. We can throw all this away. Sharps go in Sharps container. And then I'll go ahead and get this laundry put away and we're all set. And it's ready for the next patient.